nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to TFW Roundtable Podcast, Texas' most powerful and entertaining podcast. Bringing you the best in entertaining interviews from the industry's top music entertainers, sports athletes, and much more. So grab a seat and a cold one and watch, listen, and enjoy. And now, here is your host, Ruben Campos. Hey, and welcome to another episode of DAW Roundtable Podcast. And uh, we've got a very special guest with us here today. We've got the Hano Royalty from the Hano Royalty Fan, multi Hano Award winner and Grammy nominee, Destiny Nevada. Destiny, great to have you, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for the invite. Um, I think it's it's always cool when somebody wants to talk about what we're doing, and so I appreciate it so much, getting it to wherever we can. Absolutely, Destiny, and man, before we go any further, huge props to you, your brother, Grupo Remedio, on what you guys are doing and accomplishing uh, out there because you guys are making waves everywhere. So my hat's off to you guys. Had to have you on the show <clears throat> and couldn't have you at a bit, uh, a special, more special time because you also have a special announcement to make for everybody else on something that's coming up that I'm excited about and I'm sure everybody else will as well. Yep, we're super excited because we're getting ready. Do you want me to say it right now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we're getting ready to launch the first single of my latest project. It's going to be an EP and it's entitled Las Letras de Mi Padre. And basically, it's a tribute to my dad, Raulito, who a lot of people don't know, uh, is the songwriter of pretty much all the hits of my Uncle Emilio. And so I thought it was time for me to um, go ahead and pay homage to him. Y pues hacer algo para regalarlo a él, porque, pues, you know, everything that we do, he taught us musically. And yeah. um, I think to us, in a way, I always say feeling can't be taught. You're born with it or you're not. But he exactly. showed me a way to feel more um, with this music. And that's what I've been basing my records on. So this new EP is called Las Letras de Mi Padre. It's going to be out in May. And we are dropping our first single March 31st, uh, which is my dad, one of my favorites, my dad's song. He actually wrote this with my grandfather, um, Eclipse, which is another fan favorite. So we're super excited and so happy to share it with you guys. Thank you so much. Hey, we're going to be in the lookout for it, and you heard it, everybody, uh, March 31st. Uh, let's get it out there. Uh, and before we begin, vamos mandando un saludito de Cine a todos los de Monterrey. Este, we got people from Apodaca, este, San Nicolás, uh, uh, Escobedo, all that area that tune in. Este, un gran saludito. I know you're living in Monterrey, so mandándoles un saludito a todos allá. Muchas gracias por sintonarse al, al, al show. Este, y Destiny, les, les quiero mandar un saludito también. Sí, un saludo para todos de Monterrey. Muchísimas gracias por todo el apoyo, por escuchar pues este podcast que eh, pues para mí es un honor estar aquí. Y pues un saludito a todos de aquí, de Escobedo, Apodaca, San Nicolás, Cumbres, todos los partes de Monterrey. Y pues ojalá que vamos a estar aquí muy pronto en vivo, ya sin y remedio. There you go. Yep. And I know, I know uh, the, the instant messages I get is, hey, no le entendí todo, pero la parte en español le entendí. <laughs> Estuvo bueno el show. So, un saludito a todos, eh. Entendí. Yes. Quieren ser, quieren ser tejanos también. Ellos le encanta la música tejana. Um, ellos aquí, they call it San Nico, Texas, because it's so Andale. tejano. So, it's a yeah. really cool thing to share that culture here with the, with the regios. That is pretty awesome, and, and yeah, so I get a kick out of it. I know entendí todo, pero la parte que le entendí estuvo muy bueno el show. So, gracias a todos y siguen, siguen este, entunándose al, al show. Uh, so, let's get started. This. Let's talk a little bit about yourself first um, and get to know you a little bit for everybody out there. Where exactly did uh, did you grow up at, uh, at and graduate from? So, I am. I was born and raised in San Antonio, south side of San Antonio. We lived right off south of, side. Uh-huh. We lived right off the of military drive. And um, I went to McCullum High School. So I graduated from McCullum, where pretty much we all graduated from. And um, yeah, it was a great upbringing. You know, my dad went there, my uncle, my aunt, everybody was so familiar with each other um, in the Harlandale district. My grandmother worked there for a long time, retired from there. My mother just left the district. Um, so she's been there a, quite a while. And so it was a really good family upbringing. Um, and I really just, I always say the South side is kind of like its own hometown in San Antonio. 
Right, right. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I guess after graduation, you also attended college, right? Uh, University of Texas? Yes, I yeah. was at the University of Texas from 2010 to 2014. And I majored in government and a uh, minor in business. So congratulations. Oh, yeah, I'm music. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So now that we know where you went to school, where you grew up, Estelle, let's talk a little bit about what it was like uh, to grow up uh, within the family, right? Because you got your your, your uncle, your tío, uh, El Rey del Rodeo, Emilio Navarro himself, legend, and then your dad, este, Raulito, like you said. Uh, major Tejano icons, and, and I consider uh, Navaida family part of the Tejano uh, uh, este, uh, royalty, right, as far as, you know, because they did so much for the Tejano industry. Este, so how was it for you and your brothers and your cousins and so forth to to grow up during that era? Because, uh, I mean, you're talking about, uh, they even made a, a, the crossover to country, and you're talking about them playing with Alan Jackson, major acts. So, did it change anything for you guys, or was it still, hey, Destiny, you got shorts to do, and go clean the bus, and go do, go wash it, or do, do other things? So anything musical, um, anything that had to do with the tour life, we didn't look at it as work. We looked at it as we get to be part of it, I think. Um, that's at least how I felt. I think my dad and my uncle and my whole family, my mom, um, they did a really good job of doing a good mixture of okay, we are who we are, you know, yeah, there's some special treatment where in certain places and things like that, but they also raised us um, to know value and to know what hard work is. I always tell people, you know, my mom and dad gave me everything I wanted. I wanted a new iPhone, they were going to get it, but it was going to get, it was going to take time. And I had to understand that they did a lot to get that. And so I think that's what kept us really balanced. Uh, but don't get me wrong, when we did get to go, you know, to the to the gigs, I remember I must have been about four years old. Um, my uncle and dad did like a week long in Vegas. And actually, I don't know if I was like four or five. And we stayed at the Mirage for a week and we had the whole floor. So like, wow. of course, we did have cool experiences like that. Heck yeah. And at the same time, they did a really good job of balancing you know, that kind of life with a normal kid. Like I went to school, I played all the sports, I did a uh, little league. I mean, we did all of that stuff together, but I think they also taught us musically. Um, for me, you know, I, I feel like they taught me never back down from a challenge. Um, definitely that go. mentality of you are the best that was put in my head, but I knew mm -hmm. again that I had to work for it. If I wanted to get that trophy or get whatever I wanted to get, um, so I think music, awesome. we were, they always had that in our head. Um, once we decided that's what we wanted to do, or that was going to be a part of us, but they did a really good uh, job of balancing everything out. I think. So it sounds like they, we, they kept you well grounded as well, right? because, uh, it kept you humble and, uh, taught you, yeah, you got to work for it. It ain't going to be given to you. And it shows because we're going to talk more about that as far as what you and your brother have done and how you've worked towards that. How was it to, to go around uh, the public and, you be with your dad for a normal day, and then all of a sudden, hey, are we talking? Can we get a picture? Can we get an autograph? Did did that uh, interfere at all with with y'all whatsoever, or did did it become the norm for y'all? I think that was kind of normal, and to me, it was like I love to see my dad get praised. Um, yes. You know, and, and to this day, I always tell people, you know, when we first got here to Monterrey, the first time he came to to visit us, it was right after COVID. It was right after just a really hard year. And um, he hadn't been with me and Rigo for like four months, which he always oh, had wow. at least one of us. So yeah. he like literally, I felt like he was gray and just not himself. And we went to eat. And um, of course, he walks in, they put on Emilio, they put on the videos and um, walking out the whole staff, the kitchen staff, the waiters, everybody um, came out and applauded him walking out. And wow. Wow. I was crying in the back, but it was just a beautiful yeah. moment. So that's always a good memory, you know, going to restaurants and, hey, don't Absolutely. Like, you know, every now and then, hey, somebody picked up your bill. I mean, that was just something very, I always felt special um, that people would do that for him. And I think it became normal, but it was always a special thing as well. That's cool. That's very cool. But again, that goes back to your, to your, the way they, they brought you all up. Right? Yeah. And, and un saludito to your daddy too, Raulito. Uh, people, people love him so much because he's so humble and very caring. It's there. Everybody wants to hug him. And like you said, take a picture and so forth. So un gran saludito, Raul, well accomplished composer, like you said. Este, how many songs did, did he end up writing? Do you, by any chance, do you know Destiny? 
I, I don't know exactly, but I want to say it's close to like 30 um, throughout wow. the discography that he had. Um, wow. You know, of course, the beginning ones were more his. Towards the end, when he was recording a little bit more in Mexico, he would have one or two on the CDs. But I want to say in total about Muscle Mental's like 30. So. Man, wow. What an accomplishment. What an accomplishment. Could more, but... <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Right. I bet. So that's why this is so special. Going back to what you said, as far as what you're doing for your daddy, yourself and Vigo is paying an homage to him for what he's done and bringing those songs back in, in with your twist, right? With the remedio twist on it. So I can't wait. And Eclipse, we've heard it with Emilio, but now we're going to hear it with you guys. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit now about um, when you made that decision to get into music, because at some point you're in high school your college, you're going to college, heading into a big university in Texas, right? But at some point there, you must have said, hey, let me try this and see if I like it. What what triggered that and how, how did that get started? Do you mind sharing that? So I think I had a, a few moments of realizing what I wanted to do as far as music was. High school, I was super busy all the time, sports, clubs, everything. Um, but of course, in 2008, when my uncle and my dad wrecked, um, it changed my life as far as what we were doing. And we actually finished out the 2008 tour that my uncle had um, myself. That, that my was a bit, uh, I'm sorry, that was a big bus accident, right? That you're referring to as yeah. far as the accident, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's actually today is the 15th anniversary of, of the wreck. Actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So wow. it's been a long time and it definitely changed our lives. And like I said, we kind of took things into our hands. Well, my dad did. He was the next in line. And um, my cousins, Emilio and Diego, and, and us, we, we finished that 2008 tours. And I remember playing at, like, different great places, like, great places, right? And I'm like, oh, wow, like, this is actually, you know, happening. And um, I remember one time, I, I want to say we played, like, with some, with a famous banda. And I, at that time, I wasn't too familiar, but I remember my dad just kind of saying, hey, this is a really important show. Like, everybody be on their game. And so that was my first case, and I loved it. Um, it would give me extra cash. I was in high school. Yeah. I had to get my first car. So, you know, it was just a good experience. So that's when I first did. And then I went to school. I got involved in the sorority. I got a, involved in a bunch of stuff, and it was so much fun. Um, and I really wanted that college experience that I'm thankful that my dad and, my, you know, my family gave me. Um, and at that time, my uncle was back on the road. My dad was with him. He was doing his own thing. So... After I graduated, <laughs> I actually got a job like right after I came home. And I was like, damn it, I didn't think I was going to get a job. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of when I decided again, hey, dad, I have some songs that I would like to record. And that's the beginning of Remedio um, that we kind of did. It. And I feel so bad because my brother uh, definitely didn't get the same college experience I did because we were on the road all the time. But um, I think that's where it started. And then the last time was 2018. I had started writing songs in July and they just kind of felt more like they're mine. They're my songs. Right. Um, and I wanted to put them out as destiny. Um, you know, the group thing was cool to kind of introduce us, but I just felt ready. And so that was the next time that I felt like that. And I decided that like July 2018. And then by February 2019, we were in the studio. So... Wow. I took me that half a, you know, the end of the year to kind of make my plan. And gracias a Dios que yo tengo unos amigos que siempre quieren ayudarme. And, you know, that's they big. what I'm doing. And, and that's how I got the ball rolling. <clears throat> that's big. That's huge. So you go in and you record your first couple of songs, right? And then after that, uh, you said, hey, I'm, I'm definitely all in now on this, right? Yeah, yeah I figured I went too far already. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Back. And to your point, gracias a Dios, uh, 2021 was a big year for you because yeah. those beautiful trophies in the back, uh, yeah. female vocalist of the year, uh, it brought you one of those, right? You know, that was, um, that was like a bittersweet moment for me because I felt I, I had done so much work on La Preferida mm -hmm. alone. And then, you know, like I said, people have helped me out, um, and I kind of felt like it got ignored. You know, the the whole reason I came to Monterrey was because when Lino Olvidable came out, I didn't get the response that I wanted in my head. Yes, and yes. I told my manager, 
I need more than this. So let's see if we yeah. can go to one way. And then the pandemic happened and all of this stuff. And then we moved. So it was a lot of work. It was a lot of adjustment in my life. So when we mm-hmm. won for La Preferida, um, I was super emotional because I had put so much work into that. And I felt like finally, you know, somebody's yes. doing that. And then to be on that list with, you know, the very few women who are on it. And Shelly, Selena. Like Selena mm-hmm. who are my, mm-hmm. To me, you know, the where I need to go as far as vocals. Right. And then Elida, to me, who's also been a mentor, um, mm-hmm. Just like all the ways she never stops evolving, uh, right. and not right. in a fake way. It's truly her, and it's that that like I admire that so much. She doesn't go with trends or like fads. It's who she is, and yes. she just keeps getting better to me. So I, I agree. Was so honored to be on that list with them, um, but at the same time, I was still kind of hurt with the industry that when I yeah. first came out with it. It's not that I wanted to be served on a silver platter. I just wanted you to throw me in the water and nobody exactly. me in. And so right. that's what I felt like. Um, so it was hard, but I, I'm so grateful um, for everybody who voted and everybody who did listen to the record. It's a great Tejano record. I think it's yeah. uh, got a lot of variation in the styles. And um, But yeah, 2021 was good to us. We, we came home with the Female Vocalist of the Year. I also won Best New Female for my Tejano mm-hmm. Awards. And um, a premio mundial for Cruel Realidad, which is one of the singles before the second album, uh, that really was about how we felt during the pandemic, and that was a really important song to me. So it was really cool yep. to receive recognition for that. No, I agree, and I think you touched base on a lot of good stuff that I want to talk to you about, Este, because you, you're definitely setting the tone for for a lot of new artists. Mm-hmm. And what you said about uh, the industry itself, it, it's challenging. Um, and that's the thing about the Hanu itself, and I'm, I'm not going to be shy to say this because I talk to a lot of people that are the artists, right? It's it's very challenging for a new artist to to get the playtime and to get the you know the the, the yeah. pushes to to get out there and pick up gigs and so forth. And some artists quit, some others are, say, "I ain't quitting. I'm going to keep coming and coming harder." As the uh, one of the things you mentioned also um, was um, from a female perspective, the trend I'm seeing now is that the young female artists are coming in strong. And uh, if, if, if the Tejano industry is, you know, they, hopefully they wake up and see this, man, we've got another huge wave of new generation coming on strong, including with yourself and, and Monica Salivar and all these other female artists coming in very strong yeah. to raise it, the industry back again, because you guys are really working hard. But let's pick it up right there, because, again, determination, and, and like you said, the hey, I got this mentality that was brought, you know, brought into you where you said, you know what, I'm, this ain't, I ain't going to give up here. Then you and your brother decide, we're moving to Monterrey. Yeah. We're going to make this happen. So talk to me about that because that's not an easy move, moving to another country, even though Monterrey is beautiful and it's right there, right it's still a sacrifice to do this. Or like you're leaving your family behind in the States. For sure. I think... Um we had been coming to Monterrey after my uncle died. We came 2016. That was the first time we came. And we just saw how much people loved my dad. And they loved us just because we were part of him. And so I knew from the first time we came, I knew that I was going to be here somehow. I knew I wanted to share my music here. And so we had been coming since then. and We loved it so much. We would come at least once a month with some friends. My manager, who's here living with me as well, she's actually made a huge sacrifice for me. And so I just appreciate that so much. And um, so we have been coming, well, 2019, we were doing so much promo. We had plans to go to Mexico City. We had plans to go to Puebla. I mean, everywhere you could go. Everywhere. And boom, March 2020, we rented a house a week before COVID came out. So we had rented a house here. And so we actually didn't get to come back till August of 2020. And that was when I decided, you know, we were all working from home. Um, basically, like, I think my manager and my, she's also my investor, you know, she saw how committed I was ready to be. And she said, let's do it. We can move. And so we moved. And, you know, at first I didn't understand why COVID was happening. I was like, the world hates me. My album came out the night San Antonio shut down. But it was because I needed to be here. And without it, I don't think I would have moved. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would have made that decision. I was so desperate and so hungry 
that yes. I knew I wanted to come here. So it was a big move, but it was definitely the right one. And so much fun. I mean, we've had so much fun. We've gotten so much more opportunity, which is another reason why I moved here. Yeah. And just the people I've met and worked with, um, my, my producer for this EP, the main producer is Poncho Herrera, who's also my vocal coach. And um, he actually worked with my uncle before the accident and after. And so I just okay. feel like he got a really good sense of who he was. And at the end of the, at the end of my uncle's life, we were very close. Um, he would call me every morning, just whatever it was. You know, I could expect that seven thirty a.m. call so early. Right, right. And I feel like Boncho had that, knew what that was, knew what that yeah. meant to me. And that's why I asked him to do this project. And as well as uh, he loves my dad, he's obsessed with my dad. I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so well, I, it's it's really been a good eye opener. It took me out of the Tejano circle, and I think that's what saved me. Um, I think that's what saved me to realize I don't have to conform. I'm just going to do destiny, and I will always yes. be part of Tejano music. Yes. Um, so whether you guys want to claim it or not, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But now I've got yep. this other area that knows me and that's listening to my music. So one thing mm -hmm. has been a big part of all this for sure you're you're definitely setting a tone yes and uh and, and a path that uh that leads to success for that because like i said uh what what you are doing is is kicking the door wide open uh from that perspective but you're also very blessed to team up with a very good team right there in in, in, in monterey right? that's from your producer to your coach um and so forth because Man, you guys are putting out some great music, Destiny. Not only that, but the videos you guys are putting out are class act as well. So congratulations to you all as well. Um, so during during this process, I guess, um, you know, of you moving, making the move, and, and also starting to work on your new projects, writing new materials and so forth, was the thought ever, hey, you know, I, I still want to move back or did it ever get tough on you to say, Hey, I want to move back home. I miss home. Or did as a drive just too much to keep you going and saying, Hey, this is the right place. Cause this feels right for me. So I definitely, there were definitely challenges that uh, came up. We lost um, in 2020, we lost my grandmother, uh, my mom's mom to COVID. Um, we lost another uncle on my dad's side to COVID who was really close to him and my uncle. Um, so there was a lot of things that happened and other things, you know, um, so it was hard, but I knew that this was what I wanted to do. I already moved to Mexico, so I'm not yeah. one to, to step backwards. Um, even if it's hard, I know that it, it'll get there. It's just, it was that drive. Like you said, I love recording. I loved writing music and that overpowered all of the bad things and all of the issues and things like that. Um, for sure. Music has always been my escape, so it was definitely it definitely saved me also from staying here and helped my transition. Um, That's awesome. From coming yeah. from Texas to here, for sure. Yeah, strong young woman for sure to do that, mm -hmm. right? To to draw that into just hey, I'm going to put all my attention and focus into. Well, and this. I'm also I'm also the princess here, so that's what. <laughs> now, there you go. That goes a long way. Right? That cuts a long way. Is the so with that being said, um, you know, you started in recording some songs and, uh, man, the one that caught my eye right off the bat and it's just a super song, Me La Gusto. Uh, talk, to, talk to me a little bit about that because that song is amazing. Thank you. So Me La Gusto is written by Lalo Morales, who helps me on the accordion. And um, when we were here in 2019, this is a funny story. Lalo started with us in our first Remedio CD, Lalo recorded all of the accordion. And so then he left in 2015 to be with another band. He actually moved to Monterrey at that time. And okay. he came 2019 to do a show and I needed an accordion player because my old accordion player had just quit. So I said, Rico, call Lalo. I said, he'll know it. Like he'll know how to do it, whatever. So actually <laughs> that time we reunited and he was showing me some songs he had and he had my gusto. And I heard it instantly. I said, can I record it? Or, or if yes. you want to record it later, I don't care. But I really want it as my first single for this second album. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you can have it, whatever. So we recorded that song. It's um, one of my favorites. Such a good story. Such a good hook. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah, it, it came out really well. And I think, you know, the production, we recorded that song in Houston, Texas with uh, my producer, Rudy Olivares, who I do want to take time um, just to remember Fito Olivares, who is his father. Yes. Um, he passed yes. away this, this past weekend and um, such a big part of the music industry that we lost. Another great icon, Marla. Yeah, he's just, um, he, I don't think he ever saw himself where he truly was. Yeah. The most humble yeah. man you'll meet. So the most humble family you'll meet. So big shout out yes. to you. Um, para la señora Gris Olivares también. Que paz descanse Gris Olivares. Um, but his music will live on forever. So, so we put a good gusto there. And, and Rudy is such a talented producer. He went to, he graduated from Berkeley, the School of Music. And he just brings that modern feel to the traditional mm -hmm. sound. So it was really cool to work with him on all of these songs. But Mel Augusto was definitely a fan favorite, it, for sure. It gave it that uh, that distinct sound that you don't normally hear, right? But then when the hook comes in, you get hooked. It's like, oh, man, this is a kick-ass yeah. song. Uh, yeah. And then you watch the video. You guys did amazing on it, too. So I invite everybody, look it up on YouTube. And I guarantee you, and we're going to play it right here, uh, right, right when we end. Um, Jesse's gonna, gonna introduce it and you get to see it right here, uh, from that perspective. So great, great, great job on Me Da Gusto. Um, so, um, another, another big thing that, uh, I got to see, and like I told you just anyone we talked, it gave me chills a couple of times. La Casetera. Um, you guys teamed up and to see you take the stage with Yuli and the band, you and your brother, the way it sounded. And the way you guys collaborated, oh my god! And then the songs, the whoever picked the song selection was on point. It just hit every every minute. And I invite everybody to go out there and just Google it or YouTube it. It's La Casetera, uh, and I believe it says Los Hermanos Navaida, yeah. and it's going to pop up. But talk to me about that. How did that come into play? Because it is amazing. So we got called to do a festival in Ohio, um, but they just wanted me and Rigo. They didn't want me to bring the whole band. And I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't usually do that. But what did you guys have in mind? I said, well, there's a local band that wants to back you up. They know your music. I said, okay, we can do that. Two, three songs, whatever. And then uh, they said, and like I said, we want to see if y'all could do something together. And so we got in touch. We picked the medleys and everything. And um, it just came out so great. They are such professional musicians and they work in such an ordered manner it's like the best thing in the world like to not Absolutely. worry about anything so we had done that show in ohio in august and then we did it in houston in october and we had been trying to film them all but it just wasn't working out so then they got this big show at the pabellon and they called us and it got really just everything for a reason because it came out so great y pues quiero dar las gracias a neto a yuli a paquito a fer a todos el grupo and um, porque pues para mí, eso fue la primera vez que alguien estaba haciendo un homenaje a mi tío, a mi papá, en yes. una manera así, tan grande. It was tan grande. Such, uh, right. An amazing way to see them. Uh, it was a sold out show at this auditorium where we used to stay at the hotel that's right there all the time before we moved here. And so it was just a full circle thing. I always said, I'm going to play in that. They call it the egg, the huevo. It's like a huevo shape. Uh -huh. And I'm going to play in the egg. I'm going to play in the egg. And so four years later, you know, we began You to played play there. It yeah. Was cool. it was awesome. How did your dad feel about it? Because I, I know, like I said, it gave me chills, right? Uh, I'm sure your dad <laughs> was pretty pretty emotional about seeing that, right? Yeah. He uh, he actually called us when, the next day when it came out. And uh, he was like, my dad, he's super, you know, out there with his emotions, he was like, badass, it looks badass. So uh, it was really cool. The production is just amazing. Everything, those guys are so detail oriented. And that's why they have great shows and that's why they're having success, you know? Yes, um, yes. They, they bring but, that but, nostalgia, but they truly but how do cool is, But how cool is it, uh, Destiny, for them to reach out to, to you and says, hey, we want to do un, un, un homenaje to your uncle and to your dad. I mean, wow. And that just goes back to what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, about the the folks in in Monterrey specifically on how they truly love Tejano music. They do, they really do, and it's it's you know it's such a cool thing to see and and hear and you know we just went to go eat at this Marisco's place the other day yesterday and we sit down y tocables on 
and then Ram comes on, and then Elida comes on, and then three of my uncle's songs come on, and it's just so cool. Like, yeah. we're at a restaurant. We don't have to ask them to play it. It's not a cantina. It's a restaurant. It's a right. family business, and it's just so yeah. cool to see the music in that way. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I got to spend a lot of time there and work there for about five years, so it's truly amazing. Uh, you hear the cars passing by, and they got the tejanos booming on the cars, and you know, yep. whether it's La Mafia or whatever, like, hey, man, it's everywhere here. Uh, so sure enough. Uh, so um, after, uh, you know, after you guys finished that, and, and of course, the video is doing tremendous. I saw the views on that thing. It's yeah. just blowing up. And again, everybody go out there and check it out so you can see yourself. It's in a packed house. Um, yourself and Rigo did outstanding on that thing. Speaking of Rigo, talk to me a little bit about this, because I know you and your brother, uh, you know, I, I kind of, you know, tag team this in. And is he the music side of it, Destiny, for you, as far as putting the, the, the arrangements and, and so forth for you? So me and Rigo, I think we discovered this way of writing um, with La Preferida a little bit. We kind of wrote some of the songs together. Usually what happens is he has a, med a melody or I have an idea or like one part of a melody and we sit together and, you know, he'll change what I what he thinks and I'll change what I think. So that's kind of how the whole music thing starts. Um, he's also, of course, the band leader, um, you know, just getting ready for the gigs, making sure everybody's got their stuff. I'm more yeah. of the booker, the scheduler, the, you know, all of that kind of other stuff. But Rico, right. um, he's definitely his own talent in himself. My brother, you know, he's given me these past three years of him doing what I need him to do. But um, I will say that on this next album, after this EP, we already have another album we're working on. And so on this album, um, Regal will have a single on there. So nice. it'll be his. Yeah. And um, so that's yeah. just a little prep for what's to come from him. There but, you go. Uh, and you heard it here first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. Este, but but that is pretty cool. Este, and, and I'm sure your dad is just blown away by how good you all work together uh, to accomplish that. And then para, para la familia Navaira, right? Uh, what you and Rio are doing, and then it's the Emilio's sons as well, Emilio, and, and so with the bandoleros, right? The la familia Navaira continues uh, making strides in the music industry. That's that's pretty awesome for the for the family to, to for the next generation to continue to carry that banner on. Man, it's pretty cool, and I commend you all for for the work and effort that you've done into that. Uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. And and it is, it's an honor, man. It's it's something we always knew I think we wanted to do. I think my parents knew that we were going to do it. Everybody knew, well, how could we avoid it, you know? Um, but, you know, just to kind of finally, for me personally, be at the level of actually accomplishing things that I never thought in back then, you know? Now, right. um, you know, the, the Lion Grammy nomination, um, I don't think I realized what that was until after the Latin Grammys because I was so stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, now I'm, I'm hungry to get back. And, and I, I, now for it to be like, oh, yeah, that, that could happen again. You know, yeah. that's just such yeah. a big thing for me. And now I understand. Yeah. I did an interview yesterday. And, you know, I said, they asked me why I was doing this project. I said, well, because I want my dad to be able to enjoy this while he's here. There's so many mm -hmm. things that I wish I could ask my uncle, especially about, you know, being the front man, um, right. just about different parts of the business. And I can't, but yeah. I would love, you know, for my dad to, to enjoy this while he's here and know that we did this for him, you know, before yes. it's his time or before we, God only knows what, what happens in this world. Exactly. So, um, yeah. that's what, that's what I really wanted to do. And just to be, again, like I said, at that level of, of things that being recognized the way they were, it's just so I mean, they're my heroes, you know, they're my heroes yeah. and to be walking the same kind of footsteps they did, at least on the same road. It's really, really cool. No, for sure. And what a great gift to give back to your dad, like you said, uh, to be able to, to honor him in that way. Um, so that, that, well, that is pretty so cool. He's so mad at me because uh, he hasn't heard any of the songs. He has to wait. Oh, you haven't, you, you haven't <laughs> given a little tease and nada? No? Se lo trae la jodida, right? <laughs> he's probably dying. <laughs> He's like, he's like, let me listen. I can make it better. And I'm like, oh, you already have your time. <laughs> I, I love the fact where he says, I can make it better. <laughs> it's the, oh, uh, 
Uh, I want to rewind a little bit about uh, how special is the Mexico and Monterrey have been. Uh, another artist made a transition to Mexico, and lo and behold, it paid off in dividends. We're talking about Grammy Awards, este, and I saw, I saw it. I couldn't find it. This, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna show it to you, este, but I, I saw. I don't know if it was TikTok, Facebook, something, where uh, Bobby is uh, congratulating you on your move to Mexico, right? And that is pretty cool to have that type of support coming from somebody like that, but not from, from Bobby Pulido himself. But Bobby made the move himself too. For sure. He definitely was one of the ones who embraced um, Mexico the most, I think. Yes. I think Selena, had she lived longer, I think she would have lived that way. Yes. Um, my uncle Emilio, he lived here in Monterrey for a while, so he definitely embraced that as well. And it just, it's not so much, I guess for me before, it was like, oh my God, well, they want to put their music in Mexico. It's not even that. No, it's just that you're it. spreading your audience and you're making a bigger yes. audience. Um, and so, it, yeah. If, it, if, any, if anything, you're, you're, you're hoping the industry spread, spread exactly, the music out exactly. even further. I remember, yeah, yeah. you know, getting here, and there was this publication, it was called, it's called Solo Gruperas. And they used to write about me all the time because I came here. And then like the next few months, I started seeing Monica. I started seeing Isabel. I started seeing- That's awesome. Know, and that's what needs to happen. That's what it's all about. And, and, yes. You know, it, it's about sharing that. And, and as long to me, yes. you know, everyone's like, well, you know, rivals and things like that. Like to me, it's like, no. if you're working hard enough, if you are working hard enough, then hats off to you. If you're yeah. being recognized because you're just pulling some fad or something, like whatever, that's your thing. But I know, yeah. like, I, I've been able to see how much work these girls have put in and, put in. you know, yes. nominated. I was nominated with Isabel as well. And even though Bobby beat us, that's <laughs> <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> I'm never going to get over that. <laughs> um, you know, it's so cool to have his support and, and him understand, you know, where I'm coming from as far as yes. my decisions and stuff. So um, I think, that, mira, like I, you I, said, you have the opportunity to bring this new wave back. Yes, absolutely. Sure. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, too. Este, pero mira, one of the things I wanted to share with you, too, is like, uh, you know, Bobby here set every single record as far as uh, album sales and so forth, right? Desvelado itself is on a, a kind of song and it's going to go off forever. That, mean, that song never gets old. Right. He never won a Grammy here. He moves and, and starts doing what you're doing, starts spreading the music out there. And lo and behold, here he is, Grammy winner. So let's get you on there next. Let's get you that Grammy. <laughs> oh, I better get, be on there. It's, it's in <laughs> this year, so I'm dying. Oh, I'm wow. Dying to, yeah. Oh, heck yeah, Latin man. Grams That'd be insane. awesome. Yeah, well, see, there, there, there you go, man. To, to be able to do that and imagine being in Spain, accepting an award, that'd be awesome. But yeah, let's get you up there now as to do that. But that just goes to show what you all are doing, making the right decisions from a business aspect of it. Right There's a lot to learn from that. And like I said, you're setting a trend for that. One of the other things before we go, I want to talk about the, the super job that you all do uh, from a girl power perspective that you all are doing in La Onda Tejana. Uh, there was a lot of talk that back in the 90s, uh, during the own then his days, there was a lot of hate, a lot of competition. That one doesn't like me, that, you know, that, that guy, that band tries to copy us back. It was a lot of dirty competition. What we're starting to see now, though, is the girl power coming in strong. Like I said, there's a lot of submerging artists, the female artists that are putting out great music, like you said. But what I admire the most about y'all Estate Destiny is that you all are hip, helping each other out. Um, I, I saw the video of, of you and Isabel, I think at the TTMA sharing the stage and you saying, hey, come out there and support her as well. That is pretty awesome, man, to see that happening to where you're, you're helping each other out and supporting each other out. And I think if we have more of that in the industry, I think the industry itself would pick itself up more. For sure. I, I you know, practice what you preach and also, yeah. you know, um, to me, like I said, I'm confident enough in my talent in what I do that Isabel can. You put on an R and B song, a Ariana Grande song. She's probably gonna sing it better than I am. I'm not gonna lie. She's got that. She can do that whistle thing and all of yeah. that, and that's yeah. awesome. But yeah. I'm not gonna limit myself 
of singing with her just because, oh, well, she can do that better than me. That's not what it's about. To me, it's about you being able to bring up people who are equally as talented or more talented than you and to share that platform, whatever it is. Um, and, and I think that's what, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why don't they put the, the old groups and the new groups and this and that? And, and it's sad to say, but there's a lot of, well, you know, you can get so high and then that's it, you know, and, and it is exactly. what it is. It's business. Exactly. It's business. Yes. But yes. me, you know, I've been, I've been blessed with the opportunity to do what I love without having to worry too much about money. And, and I know that's not an easy thing, believe me, I was driving from work at 10 PM to Houston recording all night, all la madrugada, and then coming back to work by four, you know? So it was a lot and it is a lot, but you keep working at it. God's going to give you that way that you're going to be able to do it. It's just, it's just about finding your way. And so, you know, I, I encourage people don't give up. I encourage people to, um, really for me, it's about quality, um, music and, and really listen to the music you're putting out. If you don't love it and if you don't feel like it's you, you can redo it, do it again, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so I, I've just been blessed that I've been able to do that and have that be my process. And um, so that's why for me, you know, I would love to sing with Monica. She's got a great voice. Um, I've shared the stage with Elida here in Monterrey. Um, I've, I've, I've been able to, you know, interact with a lot of the women of this industry and, and I just appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. And I think it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, porque somos, Menos, no, menos de la música normal, you know, we, we need to, and as women, being even a smaller amount, you know, and, and it goes on a global scale. It's, it's, um, the whole women on women bashing thing. It's like, man, like, and it's getting better. Yes. I feel like this yes. Has, yes. Changed it and made it easier to be a gateway. And it's just, if we did that as women, you know, there there would be so many less things that we need to fight for because it would just yeah. come and be expected of that, you know? Yes. So right, yes. like right now, my, my drummer, Christina, she's she's one of the few female drummers in Tejano music. And, you know, we've seen it a couple of times at gigs before. She's got to be kind of stern because they're not going to take her seriously, right. you know? And even when you're musicians, I've known musicians who, don't like the fact that there's a girl on the drums, but yeah, yeah. guess what? It's my band. And to me, you there know, you she's, go. Yeah. She's a great drummer. She's an amazing talent. And I don't have yeah. to worry with her behind me. So um, I think if we come together like that and really bring it up in the right way, not fighting, just, um, you know, guys, this is what's going on. I yeah. think this is why it's happening. And I think this is why it's happening. You yeah. know, I, I think that's a definite conversation that I'm not scared to have. And, and on stage, I'm always going to be destiny. So I, I, I could have uh, Mariah Carey next to me. I'm, there's no way I'm going to beat her. You know what yeah, I mean? So that's yeah. how I see it. But, he, but you're still you. And, and that's yeah. the thing you got to remember, right? But the cool thing about it and credit to y'all, the, 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 the newer generation, as far as how professional you guys are handling yourself and how you're working together. Uh, so I, I definitely wanted to share with, that with you and, and you're leading the way from that perspective too. So thank you so much for that. Yes, the, all right. Uh, upcoming concerts, events, anything you got coming up that you want to share uh, is there with, with the audience? Yeah, so we will be back in San Antonio April 1st. I'm actually going to be, me, my dad, my brother, and my cousin Emilio, we're going to be uh, judges at a barbecue cook-off in San Antonio, okay. which I'll be posting on my social media. And then April 4th, I'm actually throwing an event with UTSA with my sorority, and we're going to be out there um Ourselves, Destiny Remedio, uh, La 45, and my good friend Ruben Realtor, who is a motivational speaker as, as well, is going to be out there. And then um, April 22nd, we'll be back in San Antonio for the Hano Explosion with La Mafia, which is uh, one of oh, the man. of all time. So we're definitely. Agree. That is awesome. You got some good stuff coming on. So, uh, how about platforms um, for if you want to give your 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 uh, your platform, your social media platforms for Facebook and Instagram? So you can follow me on all social media at <coughs> Destiny Navarra, and as well as my YouTube channel, um, all the digital platforms. March thirty first, it leaps. It comes out uh, with the video on my YouTube at midnight, and then um, the album will be out or the EP will be out. Probably late May, so before May. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
For sure. All right, but first first things first is a single. Este, so that that's coming out on the 31st. So suerte with that. I know it's going to be pretty awesome. Can't wait to hear. Este, and 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 so uh, in order for them to get a hold of you, you already you, you've got your social media. I will tell you this, everybody. Uh, she, uh, she is tremendously well at answering and responding back to people. So, <laughs> yes, you're on that girl. You, you're on. You're definitely on it. So kudos to you from that perspective too, and staying connected with your fan base. Right now, you do an awesome job with that. And then at loading up content, right now, you're constantly loading up content. So keeping your fans in tune. Este, okay. With that being said, uh, este, uh, let's move on to our closing segment here. Uh, it's been great to have you. Thank you so much again for jumping on. It's, it's truly an honor. Thank you for sharing your story también with us as far as you and your family. It, uh, it's, it's truly an honor. Me le das un saludito, un abrazo a tu papá, por favor. Este, claro. Tell him we say hello. And tell him he's always welcome to come on. Este, we'd love to have you both on, on here. Come on. Especially if you get that Grammy. No, no te olvides de mí. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you get the Grammy. Este, but, with, uh, but with that said, would you mind taking us out with, by introducing Me da gusto to, uh, to the audience? Yes. Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes que están viendo DFW Roundtable. Thank you so much for having me. And um, this is my one of my latest videos of my second album, my first single, que se llama Dime Cómo Se Siente para Todos Ustedes. There you go. Thank you, Destiny. We'll see you guys, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.